Hey, what's up YouTube? So in my last video, we discussed about the Schrodinger's equation and how every partic particle has to obey that differential equation. We observe how the Schrodinger's equation can give two solutions of two momentums and how it can be defined as the energy operator being the Hamiltonian of the function. We also discussed about a free particle and how the free particle interacts when we apply the Schrodinger's equation and what type of solutions the Schrodinger's equation gives for the free particle. So today, let's talk about a different example. So we already know that a free particle will give us two different momentums, a positive and a negative momentum. And the position of the particle will become completely undefined. But now we will pause that particle and confine that particle between two walls of infinite potentials. That means the particle cannot be found outside of this region that is outside of the walls. And the particle should be confined in a box. And that's why we call this problem as particle in an infinite potential box. But this is not exactly accurate because the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle also tells us that the particle cannot sit still. So the particle has to keep moving. Although the probability to find that particle depends on the energy of the particle. And that's why we need to quantize the energy for the particle that is confined in a box. Because we don't know the length of this box. It can be x equal to 0 and it can be x equal to a for instance. And now we have to apply mathematics and the Schrodinger's equation in order to get the energy of the particle and to get some really interesting results for a particle that is confined in a box which can be closely related as an atomic particle or in quantum chemistry the same example can refer to an analogy of an electron which is bound with a nucleus so let's see about this and let's see how the energy is quantized so before writing down what we already know let me remind you that the potential is never infinite and there is always some big amount of potential present in a particle in a box and when that's the case, you always have a probability to find the particle outside of the box, which is exponentially decreasing. But in this case, we are assuming that the potential is perfect infinite, and there is absolutely no probability to find the particle outside of the box right now. And that's how we will quantize the energy and look at our first problem, where we will try to apply this in real world. So let's write down what we already know, which is the Schrodinger's equation. Negative h bar squared over 2m second order partial is the energy so this is my schrodinger's equation and now let's try to solve this equation for this particle although here i have the wave function psi x comma t there is absolutely no wave function outside of the box since i just explained there is no probability to find the particle outside of the box although quantum mechanics does allow tunneling effects and that means that we can find the particle outside the wall if the potential is not infinite but we are again considering infinite potentials, so there is no probability. So psi is zero, here also psi is zero, and it is only present here. So now let's try to solve for this particle in an infinite potential box. So we know the Schrodinger's equation by now, which gives us the total Hamiltonian of the function as the pure kinetic energy in this case, which is negative h bar square over 2m, del square psi over del x square is the end being the energy operator of this psi. I can simply write these solutions of the Schrodinger's equation in exponential form, giving me plus and minus values of momentum, or I can write in this way. In sines and cosines as a prime, sine of kx plus b prime, cosine of kx. And this is the form that I will be using to solve this particle in the box problem. So whenever you have particle in the box, the probability function will be more spread out in the center for the first energy eigenstate. And simply here, you can assert that the particle has zero probability to be found at the boundaries. So let's try to evaluate the Schrodinger's equation at the boundaries since we already know that the psi is equal to zero. So psi at x equal to zero, which is equal to zero as we know the probability or amplitude squared here is zero, being equal to, now since if we just plug in x equal to zero, it's common sense that this will get equal to zero, the sine term and the cosine term will be equal to 1. So it will just be b prime and cosine of 0 will be 1. But psi of x equal to 0 is 0, so b prime is equal to 0. And that's what we observed in our first step. Now, this is our psi at x equal to 0 boundary. Let's quickly calculate our psi at x equal to a. So let me draw a barrier, an infinite potential barrier for psi at x equal to a this time which will be simply just to plug the value of x being a but we can take a shortcut and say since we know b prime is equal to zero 
sine x equal to a will merely be a prime sine of ka. But sine x equal to a is still zero since we know that it's a boundary condition and there is no probability of being found that particle in the boundary which is equal to zero. And this conclusion really gives us a lot of um, information about the ka term. Now sine of ka, this means that sine of ka should be equal to zero. And what, me, what do you mean by sine of ka being equal to zero? It, this means ka equals to the n multiple of pi, where n is 1, 2, or 3. 1, 2, 3, and so on. And what this tells us about the energy of the particle? This simply tells us that the particle has discrete energies. And we have finally quantized the energy of the particle. Since sine of ka only gives us 0, when the ka is the n integers of pi, which is actually not continuous. So let's try to find out more. Since we already know that k is square root of 2me over h bar and k a equals to n pi, so k can be n pi over a, I can simply write this step as n pi over a equal to square root of 2me over h bar. And now I want to solve for the energy here. So to solve for the energy, I can take the h bar term here, which means that square root of 2me will be equal to h bar n pi over a. And to solve for the energy in the final step, I can write energy equal to n squared h squared pi squared over 2m times a squared, where a is the boundary. And this solution is very important. It's actually very trivial, but it tells us about the quantization of the energy. And energy here depends on the n value, which is an integer in the first place, which is in fact n squared. So at the ground state, you will have maybe n here, and the energy will exponentially increase as you increase the states. So at n equals to 1, you, have, you will have this. At n equals to 2, maybe a little more energy. n equals to 3, the energy ex increases exponentially and it keeps on increasing. And there are infinitely many solutions for this um, particle here. And you can also consider this as an atomic force. Since um, an electron is also bound in the nucleus, you can consider that in a molecule, electron acts as a particle in a box, that is particle between infinite potential barriers. And you have to apply some energy by thermally or by applying potential difference or in any other way in order to excite that particle at more amounts of n such that it gets away from this potential well which is technically not exactly infinite in that case although here it is infinite so now this is our important conclusion where the energy comes in discrete quantized states which depends on n square h square pi square or 2 ml square so at first n equals to 1 it will look like a standing wave so let's say this is n equal to 1 Remember, at n equals to 0, you don't have any wave to begin with. So we have to start with n equals to 1, which will give us just one node, no nodes, but it's, it's the most simple form, and we also call this as the ground state. Now at n equals to 2, we can go to the excited states, which will give us one node in the center. So this means that the particle can be found either here or here, and the particle to be found at the center the probability of the particle to be found at the center is zero. So um, if you want to calculate the wave function, um, let me um, calculate the probability distribution with a different marker. So that will be something like the probability to find the particle here is maximum, and again it's here is maximum, like a Gaussian curve. And now at n equals to 2 again, we will get a similar solution at n equals to 2. Let's say this is 1. Oh, let's say this is 2, and let's say this is 3. At n equals to 3, you will have um, ka equals to 3 pi. So this is pi, this is 2 pi, and this is 3 pi. So you have here two nodes, and the probability distribution function in this will look like this, which is of course normalized. And every here function is normalizable. And this takes me to my last conclusion. We have to normalize this wave function too. So since we know that b prime is equal to 0, our wave function psi is simply a prime sine of kx. But this is not normalized in the first place. So we don't know what this a prime looks like with respect to the position or the distance of the infinite potential barriers um, or walls. 
So now let's try to normalize this wave function and let's see what the amplitude A prime is. So I hope you understood the part about the quantization of energy and how the energy coming in discrete levels. Now let's try to normalize the wave function psi in order to get the A prime parameter. So you know our psi is A prime sine of kx where ka equals to n pi. Now the condition to normalize is that the square integral should be equal to 1. So integral of negative infinity to infinity psi times psi star dx equals to 1. This is our condition. Now let's apply this condition for this wave function. So I can get and since also our particle is defined between x equal to 0 and x equal to a, my integral boundaries can be simply 0 and a. So integral 0 to a times psi square. So it will get a prime squared sine squared kx. So I can take the shortcut and take a prime outside, a prime squared outside, and sine squared kx here. But I also know the formula for sine squared kx, where any sine squared function is 1 minus cosine of 2 times x over 2. And I will use this to calculate this integral. So this is equal to 1, which is equal to a prime squared times integral of 0 to a times half dx minus integral 0 to a cosine of 2x. So cosine of 2kx for this value. All right, let's just write um, sine squared kx is cosine of 2kx divided by 2 in order to avoid confusions for my viewers. So now 0 to a cosine of 2kx over 2. And since we also know that ka equals to n pi, so our kx will be n pi x over a. Um, n pi x over a. This term will go to zero. Since this integral is very trivial, I not, I'm not going deep into solving this integral. You can solve this thing yourself. So let me just hint you guys towards some um, this thing being equal to zero. And so this thing is one anyways. One becomes a prime squared. And this integral will play out. Which will zero to a half dx times, so this will become a over two. Now it's very easy to solve for a prime, which simply gives us square root of 2 over a. And this is an, again, this is our normalized um, amplitude function. So now I can write my psi wave function psi as a prime, so square root of 2 over a sine of kx. If you want to include the time dependency, it's very easy. Since the time dependency is linear, and since unitary time evolution plays in, you can simply write psi as square root of 2 over a sine of kx times e to the power minus i omega t, or since omega t um, can be related to energy, e to the power minus i e over t times n square, where n is your levels of discrete energies. And this will be E1. Since you know that energy at any, any excited state n is E1 times n square by the formula that we just saw. Um, so this is my, again, this is my original, this is my final solution for the Schrodinger's equation for the particle in a box or in a one-dimensional box. And this is a normalized function too. So it makes things very easy to calculate the probability density function and to calculate the probability at any region. All you have to do is to integrate this function and in order to integrate, you have to just make sure that the probability is equal to 1 and then integrate the function towards the limit that you want to calculate and you will get the probability. I will t t talk about the examples later, but for now, I hope you understand how the psi function relates to the amplitude of the function being normalized by square root of 2 over a and also how the energy appears in discrete energy packets. In the next video, we will talk about the examples for this wave function psi for a macroscopic and a microscopic object. So by now, if you have any doubts about the energy being discrete and the particle being quantized or anything about the normalization of the wave function, 
please let me know in the comments and I will address it. So thank you very much for watching. This was the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.